you could actually do this all by hand by pre-chopping everything and then mixing it into a bowl all together by hand. Now that I've um, added a few more dates, the, the crust actually it has a little bit of a binding to it. So you can see how it's gotten a little bit stickier. And so the texture is really very similar to a cooked cobbler texture. So what I'm going to do with half of this is I'm going to put it onto the bottom of a cobbler pan. So we'll just sprinkle on half onto the bottom. And then we'll save a little bit to sprinkle on top. So it looks pretty. Okay, there we go. And that's it. And then um, I've already prepped some of our peaches. Um, I've sliced about four of them to make about four cups of peaches. And then what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a, a few tablespoons of agave syrup. And this is optional. So for people that don't want the added sugar, um, you don't need to use the agave. But I like agave just to give it an extra syrupy texture about it. I'm just going to toss my peaches in my agave. Well, the salt as well is optional. Um, I actually forgot to put it in my cobbler. <laughs> so I'll just sprinkle it on a little bit. But um, I guess I should have put it into the food processor. But again, it's like with all of my recipes, it's all optional. All of my recipes are just about using whole food ingredients. So you just want to use ingredients that are fresh and whole. Ideally in the summer, you know, when peaches are available, go to your local farmer's market, support your local community, and use local fresh ingredients. Here in the U.S., our food travels about 1,400 miles from farm to table. So in that distance of traveling and all the handling of all the people in the factories and the packaging, and there's a lot of places where foodborne illness can actually contaminate the food. So it is actually more beneficial to buy locally and seasonally, like this beautiful peach, it's packed full of vitamins and minerals. It's at its peak, and also the flavor profile is just amazingly delicious when it's local and seasonal. So you're actually getting more for your money. Um, and so the magic ingredient here that I'm going to put into the peaches is a vanilla bean. And so um, vanilla bean can be quite expensive, but it's so worth it to me. Um, it smells incredible, but if you want, and sometimes when I'm in a time crunch, I will actually use alcohol-free vanilla extract. So I'll show you how to de-seed this. You want to lay it down on your cutting board. I'm using a ceramic knife for those of you who are wondering why my knife is white. Um, I prefer ceramic knives because they don't oxidize your produce as quickly. And also, you don't need to, you don't need to sharpen a ceramic knife. And so I cut this in half, and when you look inside, it, there's tons of little seeds, and these are the vanilla bean seeds. So the way to get it out is to take a blunt knife or a spoon. You just want to run it along the cut edge and you gather up all the seeds. So these are all the vanilla bean seeds. And vanilla bean is really an essence. So I'm going to um, put this into my peaches, and then we're going to mix it around. I'll do the other half. And then what I like to do with this bark that's left over from the vanilla bean, um, it has a really strong smell of vanilla. So I like to actually put it into my glass jars with my nuts and seeds. Oh, look at that. You can see all the vanilla beans in there mixing up. And that's why when you get a really good, um, you know, vanilla ice cream, it has all those little black seeds in it. Look at that. It's beautiful. And it smells so good. And vanilla is actually known to be an aphrodisiac. Um, it's supposed to uh, release endorphins in your brain and make us feel really happy and in love and everything. So um, I recommend using it if you're making a special someone uh, sweet. And then also when I um, make a smoothie, I'll use a high-speed um, high blender. And so in that blender, I'll throw the bark in because it'll just pulverize the bark and it still tastes like vanilla. So now that I've mixed the peaches with the vanilla and the agave, I'm going to top my crust. with the peaches and then I'm going to take the rest of my cobbler crust topping and just sprinkle it on top and that's it and I promise you that when you put this out people aren't even going to ask if it's raw or cooked they're just going to eat it because it's so delicious and they're just going to love it
Wow. So this looks just like a cooked cobbler, right? Like you could never guess that this is not cooked. It just looks delicious. And that's it. So <laughs> there's a kitten with me in the kitchen. Um, so since this is a home kitchen, it's okay. And even at my house, my dog's always in my kitchen and she's always underfoot because I always drop things on the floor and she's my vacuum cleaner. So she'll just eat everything up for me. <laughs> she's my compost bin and my vacuum cleaner. So um, that's the meowing that you hear. There is a cat underfoot. And she's excited about the raw cobbler that we just made. So here was our lovely pistachio peach cobbler. Um, it smells so delicious. It smells like vanilla and pistachio. It's absolutely delicious. It was made with peaches, pistachio, and dates and vanilla bean. That was about it. So um, this came out of my new book, Annie's Raw Food Desserts, on page 95. So you'll see the photo looks like our beautiful cobbler. And, um, <laughs> and this is my new book. And for more recipes and information on me, please visit my website, AnniePio.com. That's A-N-I-P-H-Y-O.com. And make sure to come back to Supreme Master Television for another cooking show with me. And I'll see you soon. Bye. And now, please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television for Between Master and Disciples. May the sweetness of smiles bring sunshine to your days. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash VEG 